Welcome to lecture 12 which is on digital photogrammetry. This is the last lecture in the photogrammetry module and it is a very important in the sense that today we are in the digital era and we have to learn the use of software and use of the digital images. So, you are going to learn here uh, the various application and uses of digital photogrammetry and how we can use it for creating the mosaic and creating the 3D model. So, let us begin. If we look at this curve, we earlier had a graphical photogrammetry where we were preparing manually the maps using photographs. So, on the uh, photographs you used to keep a piece of tracing paper and try to create graphical information from them. Then <coughs> analog photogrammetry where we uh, make use of uh, a very simple kind of a devices. Uh, for example, I have explained you the use of a stereoscope. Then um, 1950 onwards the analytical photogrammetry came into uh, the development scenario and here we uh, used some kind of a uh, instrument which were mechanical or uh, you know had a computer also. So, we could use computer, but still the uh, photographs they were scanned and used and uh, plotter was there. So, this can automatically plot the map. Then came after 1960 digital era, where all the uh, hard copy prints, uh, the photographs, the analog photographs have been replaced by the soft copy photogrammetry or digital photogrammetry. And once we are using uh, the digital photographs, we have to learn the use of the software photogrammetric software. So, a lot of soft photogrammetric software were also developed. So, that we can uh, very easily create uh, various kinds of output from those digital photographs. So, this is all our analog photogrammetry where uh, we were using uh, optical and mechanical instruments. So, these instruments as you can see in the photograph also here they were very bulky, very heavy occupying a very large area and photographs were used or uh, we were also using the negative films uh, using this is on these instrument to construct the 3D vision from the stereo pair. So, they were uh, basically based on the same principle and stereometric vision was created <coughs> and we were using the parallax also manually uh, with the help of the optical chain which was present. So, both the photographs which were keeping here the left photograph and the right photograph on the two projection planes on this instrument, they were oriented properly. So, it was a kind of a inner orientation, the exterior orientation, the relative orientation, these were all mathematical approaches which were used. And once the uh, it is properly oriented as we were doing orientation of the photographs uh, when by we are doing the height measurements the baselining part of it. So, they were doing um, we are doing the orientation of the photographs in the similar manner uh, the creating the same geometry as it was at the time of taking the photographs by aerial camera. And once this is done, then we have to create a stereo vision and then we pre prepare a map. So, there is a plotting table here, we create a map and we create the contours from that and the 3D model also is realized through the projection of those two images which were there. So, all that work was done actually manually, although we are using the capability of the instruments and uh, measurements creating a 3D model and drafting part preparing a map drawing the contours. So, you can see there is a table here on which we have to put a, a drawing sheet or a tracing sheet and then with the help of the two uh, uh, kind of a wheels we can uh, prepare the map and move the pen 
from this plotter. The uh, analytical photogrammetry, when the analytical photogrammetry came with the developments in photogrammetry, the computer and software were introduced and they replaced all our optical and mechanical. So, the uh, instrument became quite compact in size and uh, computer was there, you can display and you can actually maybe use again the left image and the right image here. And you can see the display of the image, sometimes uh, you are scanning the image and then using those images. And uh, there were analytical instruments were uh, attached with the plotters. And then we were using same principle of stereo vision, creating the stereo vision and then software were using. So, that additional part was there. The software once you have measured the point elevations and the coordinate systems, then you can create a 3D model with the help of those coordinates uh, using the capabilities of the software. So, job becomes much much simpler, much much faster here and possibly the accurate also. So, 3D digital models were created very quickly with the help of this. They were expensive and highly accurate also uh, in nature. So, uh, many of the people continued with the traditional method of interpreting the photographs. Then the uh, digital era came where the photographs uh, were digital in nature and the aerial camera which had a film mounted on it. Uh, they have all CCDs now in it. So, the aerial cameras, digital aerial cameras I have shown in my earlier slides. So, uh, those cameras were mounted uh, on the aircraft and uh, photographs were digital in nature and those photographs we call as the soft copy also, soft copy photogrammetic technique here uh, which is uh, basically uh, is used to uh, enhance the images also, improve the quality of the images also. You can zoom in and zoom out and change the scale of the mapping. So, this digital photogrammetric technique became quite popular in order to uh, not only carry out the measurements uh, from the photographs uh, as you can see the left photograph on the left screen, the right photograph on the right screen and using now the complete capabilities of the software. We are doing the orientation, we are creating a 3D model and then uh, we are doing the stereoscopic measurements and these measurements are then used for different purpose. In digital photogrammetric system, this uh, begins about the same time actually started about the same time as our analytical plotter have started and the concept was developed at the end of 1950s and early 1960. But in mid 1990s, these digital workstation, photogrammetric workstation schemes, they were available in the market. So, they were similar to the normal workstation, but they had specific software for photogrammetric work. They were able to handle not only the stereo pair, but very very large number of photographs together. Uh, since you have to create sometimes the mosaic of the entire area in order to see the bird's eye view of the area. So, these digital photogrammetric workstations although costly, although expensive, but uh, uh, people started using because they were uh, uh, saving lot of time and uh, they were uh, very quick in fact, to carry out the very accurate measurements. So, what was the workstation? It was a, a normal kind of a system consisting of the hardware and a, a computer with a big RAM and large storage and having its own software. So, you require a specialized kind of a software and the training on that software so that this could be utilized. So, the these uh, systems having uh, very large memory and big RAM and very fast processing because you are dealing with a huge quantity of the data. And there were multiple processors in the systems so that the computational speed is achieved so that the processing of the data becomes much much faster. Now, the inputs for this digital photogrammetric systems they were either the scanned aerial photographs or the digital 
aerial photographs. So, if you have the hard copy product then you have to scan them. When you are doing that scanning please remember that uh, again some distortion is introduced at the process of the scanning. So, there were uh, digital images which are directly obtainable from the digital camera you create uh, stereo images from various remote sensing platform that can also become the input to our this digital system multi sensor stereo images which are available from satellite from other sources that can be used the images from the UAV system that can be used and output from the digital aerial video on terrestrial camera. So, there are multiple um, sources then we can use lidar data. So, uh, the lidar data could also be used in the photogrammetric systems, photogrammetric software. So, there are um, various sources of input which could go into your photogrammetric system to carry out the mapping and analysis work. Now, what is the output from the uh, workstations when you are working on digital photogrammetric workstation? You can see here that maybe you have the analog photogrammetric camera systems or digital camera systems and then if you have analog then uh, it is to be scanned. So, that you convert into a raster digital data form. So, once you have the digital images from either of the sources or both of the sources then uh, you are processing this data mathematically processing this data in order to create a digital terrain model or maybe digital elevation model or maybe digital surface model or you want to create various thematic maps digital thematic maps a road map a land use map urban area map water resources map. So, these maps are uh, created from those photographs or you can carry out some measurements in the third dimension you want to create 3D you want to plot the contours you want to determine the slope of the area. So, this is all possible outputs which you can get from the digital photogrammetric workstations. There are several uses of uh, digital photogrammetry uh, uh, as you can see that uh, you can create digital maps. So, your maps are uh, in the form of a digital output and the advantage of then such map is uh, you can further use these maps in geographical information system which you will learn later on in the uh, this course module. So, you can directly use those digital maps into image processing systems or GIS systems and also uh, the uh, change of scale is very quick. So, you want to have those digital maps at a different scale uh, the change of scale is, is very easy when they are in digital mode. Creating the mosaic because many times we are not working on a single photograph our study area is very large. So, we are creating now mosaics not with the manual processor procedure, but we are using the digital methods of either matching the details or using some control points. So, that this is a seamless kind of a mosaic. So, complete area can be displayed on the computer screen. It could be a 3D model in the form of a DEM, DSM or DTM and also ortho photographs. So, uh, if you remember in the previous lectures I uh, told you that the ortho photographs uh, basically have uh, zero relief displacement there is no relief present and then they can be straight away used as you are using topographical maps. So, this is a very actually effective and a very important and very popular use of the digital photogrammetry. You can analyze handle very very large number of photograph that is another uh, advantage or use of these images because uh, very very difficult when we are working with those hard copy data to handle in large number at a time you are working on the two photographs and then you are working on the next two photographs in order to carry out the stereo measurements. So, when uh, you have the data in stereo measurements uh, you can analyze those very very quickly you can analyze video images also to create a 3D model or to carry out any measurements on that. So, if you have collected the video images that is also uh, that also become input and we can carry out 
the normal uh, photogrammetric methods to determine the measurements to carry out the measurements. Then they are very, very much useful in architecture and planning. Uh, whenever we are dealing with the uh, building uh, different type of structures, um, maybe the uh, elevation of those structures. So, if uh, uh, we want to plan some structure, so in architecture and planning also um, recording the uh, important structures on the ground. So, that has also been done archaeological survey of India for example, or using the photogrammetic techniques to preserve those uh, world heritage sites. Then in manufacturing sector is also um, digital photogrammetry is being used in medical sciences. In medical sciences you know uh, uh, the uh, digital photogrammetry used to create a the 3D model of uh, the various parts of the when suppose artificial lag is to be implanted then this digital photogrammetry is playing very important role actually to estimate the size and to see the ankle movement. Then plastic surgery field this is uh, has very very important applications. Police investigation, so there are actually large number of uses of those digital photogrammetry not only creating the maps carrying out the measurements, but a real time applications where it is helping the administrator, the planner, the medical science people uh, in order to give very very precise measurements because once you create a 3D model you can view it from different angle and carry out very very precise measurements from uh, those 3D models. Creating 3D city maps, this is a new upcoming area uh, uh, which where maps are in 3D environment. Uh, earlier all our maps were in 2D paper print, so we could only uh, just feel from contours the height of the ground. But on the ground there are structures which have also their height. So, these 3D maps uh, have been created into the digital environment and this process is going on. Those 3D city maps uh, become really very, very popular because uh, we immediately recognize uh, uh, the different objects, we immediately recognize our location with respect to the surroundings because we are habituated to see the uh, earth surface in the 3D model. Augmented reality and virtual reality maps have been created with the help of the computer vision techniques and also taking the input from uh, the aerial photogrammetry because it can provide you the details about the different facilities and infrastructure as well as the ground surface. Now, you can see here it is a digital mosaic of the area. So, photogrammetic technique is being used for creating the digital mosaic of the area. These are the three photographs here uh, of a long building and they are in digital environment. So, here now we are using the capabilities of the software, but when we are using the software we should know what is the basic principle, what is the mathematics behind it what is the algorithm which has been used, what is the concept which has been used by the algorithm. So, here we are using either the image matching technique digitally or with the help of certain control points in the common area. So, in the common area uh, we uh, select certain control points and we try to match those control points together digitally, so that one detail will fit over the other detail. So, when we are doing that this is a conventional way of showing a mosaic you know you can uh, see the overlap portion also one photograph is overlapping over the other photograph, but we have to create a seamless mosaic of the area. So, that you see just a single image and you can carry out the interpretation and can see. So, this is the like of uh, 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 creating the mosaic digital mosaic where you do not see the joints and you see a seamless kind of a thing one single image uh, which has been stitched together which has been joined together with the help of those common features. Now, when you see this particular building now uh, you can extract the information you can actually create a vector map of the whole building elevation map of the whole building uh, and this is also done now using the capabilities of the software. So, this is uh, I call the vector map. 
because now it is no more raster data. So, from raster data which was the digital photograph we have created the vector maps and these maps you know line diagram they are showing the outline of the building, they are showing the outline of the various doors and windows and the uh, the you know, brickwork which has been done on both the sides. So, with the help of such kind of uh, output which you are deriving from digital photogrammetry, now this output becomes input to GIS geographical information system and now this data you can use uh, along with the other data for integration purpose that we will learn later in GIS module, but um, this is output from digital photogrammetry it can be used as such or it can be further augmented in GIS along with the other data set. Now, uh, this is a, uh, a uh, kind of a terrestrial kind of a approach where we have a pillar and this pillar is on the ground is a, uh, is a uh, giving us a three dimensional uh, uh, image and impression and person here is taking the photograph. Uh, of this 3D pillar. So, this is called a terrestrial photogrammetry where we are closer to uh, the object in order to create a 3D model. So, once we take the image of this particular pillar from at least two distances, two perpendicular mutually perpendicular distances. So, we have the photographs, two photographs, we have the common overlap region and now again we are using the 3D concept, 3D photogrammetry. Uh, in the software to create a 3D model of that pillar. So, we are using for example, here the software is a photo modeler scanner, but there are very very large number of software which are nowadays available some are uh, free of cost also open source and some are commercial software. So, uh, one can use the capability of uh, um, any photogrammetric software which can be used for uh, creating a 3D model from those two photographs because the parallax has been introduced by shifting the camera from two different locations. So, similarly the uh, it could be any other structure. So, building for example, uh, you create uh, a model in your computer environment from the actual building photographs. So, it looks like uh, you know similar to the existing building uh, when you add uh, you know texture to this particular structure and other parameters to the existing 3D model. The second use uh, and the greater use is in creating the ortho photographs because vertical photographs uh, cannot be straight away used uh, for preparing the maps creating a map of a larger area due to its distortion which is present all along the edges and height variation. Uh, creates a relief in the model. So, we have to uh, do that go away with those things. So, we are doing ortho rectification, uh, we are creating from the normal photographs vertical photographs to ortho photographs digitally now. So, we are removing the distortion uh, of the camera lens which these photographs were taken and displacement which is due to the relief that also we are removing from here and variation of the terrain they are corrected once we are creating the ortho photographs from this data. Uh, now, you see the ortho rectification process. So, in this ortho rectification process the photographs were in the perspective projection mode we are bringing into the orthographic projection mode where the rays are orthogonal. So, in ortho photos um, um, we know that uh, the uniform scale is there of the photograph we bring it to the uniform scale. We bring the best of the information uh, which has been captured by the photographs and remove the distortion um, very good source of input to GIS because we can now straight away use as a uh, topographical map and we can create vector maps from that photographs and integrate with the data, data is in digital form. So, a process for generation of this is um, we are doing rectification or maybe uh, we are creating the orthophotoscopes and orthophoto negatives from it. So, this is the process flow diagram of it. We have uh, the aerial digital aerial images or the satellite images 
and we are doing the orientation of that into the software. After doing that orientation, we are uh, applying some corrections to the data with the help of the DEM and creating the ortho rectifies image. So, these images now can be used for creating the map or create or taking the measurements on the photograph. Now, you can see uh, the left photograph is unrectified image. So, in the unrectified image if you focus particularly this particular area and this particular area you will find that the airborne line scanner uh, has distorted that kind of figure. So, these uh, are not mutually perpendicular to each other those roads and uh, due to the movement of the aircraft this has happened. But after the rectification you can see that this portion and that portion that has been straightened up. So, maps can be created as you I told you from the ortho photos on the left side we have the ortho photo on the right side it is uh, a map thematic map which has been created. So, you can carry out a measurements this is the ortho photographs which has been draped on the digital elevation model. So, one can actually now feel the exact height of those buildings. Extraction of the buildings from the ortho photographs as a matter of fact you can extract any feature, but this example shows that you are extracting the uh, footpath of the building. Advantages lot of advantages are there when the data is in digital form we can handle data from non traditional sources such as it could be a lidar data, it could be a video camera, it could be a remote sensing data also satellite data also. Speed economical and accuracy these are the best advantages of having the data in digital form whether from photogrammetry or any other source. It is easier to update the information or change the scale of the maps because the uh, information is dynamic is changing very fast and if we have the old maps and we want to update our maps from the new photographs then this updation is very quick and very easy. Input and output they are also available to in digital form and we can integrate that output from the digital photogrammetry again with the remote sensing data or GIS data. We can create several products as I already discussed orthophoto, DEM, mosaic and digital photogrammetry uh, you know the many process have been automated. So, uh, a human intervention is minimum the uh, input is required and then rest of the things will be taken care by the software. This is uh, the applications there are large number of applications of the photogrammetry whether we are using the photogrammetry in analog mode or whether we are using the photogrammetry in digital mode. So, you can see uh, this list is just exemplary, but there could be many many more applications. So, whenever we are talking of these application you can see that the applications are not just limited to preparing the maps not to civil engineering, but these applications are much more beyond that. For example, we can create a virtual reality and augmented reality map and walk through maps which I have shown in my earlier presentation also to you. Then for acquisition of the military intelligence. So, in military in army in defense these aerial photographs are giving very very useful information very strategic information is available. In the field of archaeology it is giving us very good information uh, to relocate the existing property boundaries in the field of medicines in the field of medical sciences this uh, photogrammetry is playing very very important role. So, when we deal about the earth surface or mapping we can get we can prepare maps topographical maps we can have a bird's eye view of the whole area. So, that we can see the entire ground for planning purpose we can create digital terrain model we can find out the coordinates of the various points we can create 3D and 4D maps. So, 4D maps are uh, very very useful very important area of research creating the walk through models or assessing the damage or, or uh, for flood management these maps are very useful. You can assess the damage if you have the temporal data or due to the other calamities one can carry out all the. So, this is all about the nutshell about the applications of the photogrammetry which you have learned so far. So, thank you very much.